Hello everybody and welcome back to Nervous Reviews. Thank you guys for 10 million subscribers to celebrate this amazing milestone. I thought I'd go ahead and review every single Stephen King book. And by that I mean I'm ranking every single Stephen King book that I've ever read, which is 25 so far. I know a lot of my fans are Stephen King fans, so I thought I'd do this for you guys. Not gonna be long, about one sentence per book so that I don't keep it too 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 long. And I will just, you know, until we get to the top 10, at that point I'll give myself a little bit more room to talk. Change of plan, 26. Apparently I'm counting one twice or I messed up my counting Either way, here's my 26th pick of all time, Wolves of the Kala. Um, fat and nothing happens. 25, Insomnia. Literally nothing goes on for the entirety of the book, and I absolutely hate the politics that goes on. The story itself is literal garbage. Number 24, Joyland. I, I barely remember it. Nothing interesting. Literally, they just exist for a while. Number 23, Doctor Sleep. The villains are garbage and the magic system is so whack. Number 22, The Dark Tower Part 3, The Wastelands. Takes way too long for anything to happen and even when it does, it feels very disjointed. Number 21, Dark Tower Part 6, The Song of Susanna. Meh, it's okay, it's not bad. Stuff happens, but not as interesting as his other books. Love the premise, but the storyline is actually really bad because it opens up a bunch of stuff and never really closes it and it's very weird and abstract and doesn't really have a very good story itself. Just kinda lame. Not that much happens, but for some reason, this is the only one with the story. If you couldn't tell already, I'm not a very big fan of The Dark Tower. You'll see more when I finish The Dark Tower because I haven't read the seventh one yet. But you'll see. Not a fan. Anyway. Anyway. Oops. I messed up. Uh, I counted the stand twice, and that's why the numbers are weird. Number 17, The Institute. A really slow, not much, th not that much going on. Awesome premise, but the, the characters carry it. And the characters aren't really that good either, so there's not, this is like a meh book overall. Literally just politics, but there was one subplot that was actually kind of fun, and I enjoyed it to a degree, so that's why this is kind of high. People usually don't like this book, but I'm okay with it. Number 15, Carrie. Uh, I felt it was very disjointed, and it had a good story and a good premise and plot. The only thing is I don't like the way it was told with the pistolary, and that really annoyed me because I felt like I didn't get the emotion as much. Number 14, The Dark Tower Book 4. It has its own cohesive story, and for that reason and that reason alone, I enjoyed it. Instead of being this giant story that feels very disjointed and weird and wacky, this has a story, it has a plot, characters, and it's good, and it's alone, and it's proper. Number 13 is The Girl Who Loved Tom Gordon. It was gripping enough, it had a good enough character, it was short, not that much happened, but it was quick and to the point and I enjoyed it for that, it had emotion, it had scary fears, fear, dangerous times, it was awesome, I, I enjoyed it. It wasn't that good though, it was, it was good. Number 12 is Colorado Kid. It, I barely remember it, but I remember it being really fun and I remember it being a very interesting smart mystery and they literally don't even do anything except talk about the mystery. And for me, since it was so small, that's all I needed. I enjoy that kind of stuff. Number 11, Pet Cemetery. If you can't tell already, this is about the five star point. And this was a very scary book, horror book. It, it was really fearful and very creepy. However, it didn't really make me feel that much emotion, which is why I ranked it so low. So this is my top 10, this is my 10th book, and if you don't already know, uh, this is where I will be talking a little bit more, so give me a little bit more time to talk and I'll explain why these are my favorite. So, number 10 is The Outsider. I really enjoyed this because it was a very good mystery book. It was one of my introductions to King, and so because of that, I had a lot of fun going through this in a very modern King light. And at the same time, it really showcased his strengths, which is a very tight... Uh, plotting and very great character work and I enjoyed so much of this just because of how how well the mystery was written and how well the final villain was revealed and explained and I really enjoyed basically all aspects of this I think this is a, one of King's most best recent works number nine the cycle of the werewolf I cannot stress this enough this went out of print so I had to buy this for like a crazy amount of money however it's really really good and if you really want to pick something up just to read in like one night it's very small it's almost like it's it's illustrated it's really beautiful it's a very fun tale it's good considering its size it does exactly what it could possibly do because it is Stephen King and he nails it with this one. It's tight play, tight plotting and awesome character work. It's really, really good. A lot of the stories in here are hit or miss, but overall, I think that this is, has just a bunch of wonderful stories, and some of the stories in here are easily some of my favorite stories of all time. For example, Quitters Inc., which for some reason really struck a chord with me. I thought it was absolutely wonderful, one of King's best works ever, and at the same time, other people call other works his best work ever. For example, there's one called Trucks, which people absolutely love, and I don't know, I'm not a really big fan of that. If you want an in-depth review of every single story in here, then I will have a video about that link in the description or in my channel if you want to go find it. I talk about every single book and overall I think the highs are extremely high and the lows are adequate. So 
overall, it's a very, very good book in my opinion. It really, really scared me in a lot of points, which is more than I can say for a lot of books. Number seven, The Stand. You might be surprised that this is so low on the list, and the reason for that is that basically it's really, really slow. Now, while it is awesomely epic, and it does have awesome fight scenes, and awesome character work, and awesome stuff, I really, really love the character work in this as well. It's really, really slow, and there's just that middle chunk in there that I just feel like it's so unnecessary, it's so slow, it's so boring. And But at the same time, this is a five-star book. Don't forget that I absolutely love this book. Go watch my review if you haven't already. For some reason, I think people like that review. Anyway, uh, really, really, really good. It's thick because it really deserves to be this thick. There's a lot of material in here, and it's covered magnificently for the most part. Even the boring parts, I enjoyed. However, there's so much of that boring part that I couldn't help but feel like this could have just re been removed. It's very, very easy to do, and there's a lot of stuff I don't like about it as well. A lot of specific stuff that I haven't talked about in the past and I won't talk about very, very near future because I need to reread before I go into that. But that's my general thoughts. One inconspicuous jump cut later, number six, Revival by Stephen King. I don't know why I said that. Listen, this book... I really enjoyed it. I very rarely get scared by a Stephen King book or a book in general. However, this one did it. It's a very, very good take on a classic, which is Fifth Business. And I think that it's so much better than that book just because it's so modernized and so much more interesting in so many different ways. Because Fifth Business, it's a classic, right? It's one of the most famous books of all time. That book is very dull in terms of plot. Now that, of course, the characters and stuff, they're wonderful there. But in this, I believe that the characters are matched. The characters are extremely deep. It's like a life story going on in this book, along with great conspiracy stuff, great questions on on great life's biggest questions. It's really interesting like that. Science, stuff like that, dude. It's scary. It's really, really scary. The, the, the stuff that this novel says about life is so scary, and that's why it's number six. Number five, Salem's Lot. Now, at this point, you're going to see a lot more of classic Stephen King. Of course, top five is going to be classic Stephen King, of course, because classic Stephen King is some of the best stuff ever. But this is obviously one of his best books. It's one of a lot, it's a lot of people's favorite Stephen King book, and the reason is there's not too much special about this book, right? It's, it's a book about vampires. It's a very strong book about, you know, the, the concept itself isn't crazy cool, but at the same time, it doesn't need to be. That's not the appeal of this novel. The appeal about this novel is that the concept itself is fine. But the way it's told is wonderful. In my opinion, this is one of the greatest vampire books written of all time. You know, of course, we have Dracula, probably that's at the top. And then in my opinion, this is second because of just how wonderful the plot is, how wonderful the characters are, all the implications of all of the small plots and all the decisions and all of the symbolism and all of that. It's, it's really, really interesting. The themes, it's just wonderful. This is just a solid book. And that's something that you don't really get these days. You know, you get a really strong concept, a really strong plot, something like that. No, this is strong in everything. It's really strong in everything except for concept, which is fine, right? It's a vampire novel. And you, if you know about the concept, you know it's kind of interesting. But it's really, really good just as a novel. Number four, The Shining. This is another Stephen King classic, and of course it is that because it's one of the most fa famous movies made of all time, right? This is the basis of one of the most famous movies. And obviously, it has its appeal from there. But in my opinion, it really, really does transcend that. Because in this book, it's a really wonderful character piece of just this, this, this guy and this family and this evil. And it's just so deep and it's so amazing how wonderfully Stephen King can go into the mind and make you feel all these things and sympathize with this horrible character. And it's just wonderful how the plot progresses. Of course, usually Stephen King's books really have bad endings. This one, in my opinion, was a little bit more explosive than his usual endings, and I really enjoyed that aspect of it, because usually they kind of go off meh. This one, there's a lot of parts that I kind of felt were meh, but overall, it was really, really fun. So in my opinion, just like Salem Thought, Salem Thought's like a really good novel on its own. It's just solid everything. The Shining, it's solid everything, but the character work is next level. For a long time, I called Misery my favorite Stephen King book of all time, but right now it's my third. And the reason I put it here is that it's just length. There's there's no fluff. Of course, technically there is fluff. If you want to skip all the these pages, you can see like they got really weird fonts, and it's literally the character in the book writing his own book. And usually people skip that because it's kind of awful. At the same time, I didn't skip it. I read it, but it was a complete pain to read because. Just the way it's edited, it's so bad. 
but just ignore that, right? Just ignore it, skip it, right? Other than that, the actual story has no fluff. It is exactly what you need. It's a wonderful metaphor with some of the scariest characters, some of the scariest plot, really riveting, right? It really, really pulls you in because it's such a primal fear that you feel. It, it's such a classical story nowadays, misery. Like everybody knows the story of misery. And it's just, it's wonderful how the plot progresses and how the characters are just so specifically attuned to being this evil, very specific kind of person. It's not just this evil villain. It's this very specific bad kind of person that doesn't, that really wonderfully clashes in such a unique way. It's very hard to explain, but this is just so tight. It's so wonderful. It's so great. Just consider, consider the length of it. Like it's so short and it's so wonderful. Number two, It. Now, everyone knows this is coming because it's one of Stephen King's best books ever. This is a tome and it's wonderful. It is the greatest uh, character work I think I've ever seen in a book. Um, it's some of the greatest world building I've seen in a book that doesn't leave Earth, right? It, it's just wonderful in those ways. It's 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 transcendental. Uh, it's, though I, I forget the word, but you have to understand, this is simply out of this world how deep everything goes. Plot itself, meh. It's good, of course, it's good, of course, right? But if we're looking at it compared to everything else, it's meh. And stuff, just just the base level stuff, is it's all good, right? It's not bad. The ending, in my opinion, was, was good, right? It's meh compared to everything else. But you have to understand that the character work in this, I've never seen anything like it. It is just, you dive so deep into every single character in such a believable way. Even the characters you don't care about, you, you go into their mind and you understand them fully. It's just incredible how that happens. The lore as well, which is something I didn't commend it on with the video I made a long, long time ago. The lore is so deep considering how few characters there are and how just, like it's just, it's just a clown, man. What can you do with that? But you can do a lot, a lot with that. And that's the beauty of this book. It's just so, there's so much going on and it's so deep and it's so wonderful in that way. So that is my second Stephen King book. So before I reveal my number one, I'm just gonna go ahead and say, literally, you guys have seen every single Stephen King book I've read. I've uploaded a review of it if I've read it, except for Dr. Sleep, which should be coming out very, very soon or has come out. I don't know when I'm posting this video. And if you've done that, then you might be thinking, Nervous, what's this last book? Because I know all of the books that you've reviewed, and you've, you've reviewed all of these books. Yes, I have, but there's one that you might be forgetting, which is his nonfiction book on writing. Now, okay, listen, literally, this is called the Bible of writing. It is just the best informational guide on prose I've ever seen in my entire life. And this isn't even a book on prose. Half of this book is on prose. The other half is literally just Stephen King's, you know, autobiography. And there's so little actual content of writing in this book. And yet, everyone who becomes a writer nowadays, you know, people who are writing as youth or as, as teens right now, they've read this book and they think it is one of the greatest books ever written on writing. And I can't disagree with that. If I had to recommend everyone to read one Stephen King book, it would always, it would definitely be this, right? Because it might be wonderful, but it's not for everyone. It's just, it's deep and it's, it's philosophical, it's wonderful. And then stuff like Misery, right? That's wonderful, it's short, but it's, it's very much a very specific kind of story that deals with a very specific type of conflict. This is just informational. And it's wonderfully written. It's so just easy to read. And I, I didn't want to stop reading it. It took me, let's see how many days it took me. It took me three days to read this book. And I absolutely loved every moment of it. I read it in class. I read it everywhere I went. And I'm a very, very slow reader. I cannot express how much I love this book. And I really want to read this again. There's a very few books I put on my reread list, right? I put Lord of the Rings, Silmarillion, stuff like that, that I, I put at the top of my list. And then there's this, then there's stuff like It. Um, and I think that's about it for Stephen King. Two books, that's it. And this is just up there because it's just so helpful in so many possible ways that you could not comprehend if you have not read this book. So if you take anything away from this video, please read on writing. You'll make so much out of this. You will learn so much. It'll be an amazing part of your life. Just understand the truths that are within this book. So I hope you guys do enjoy this. When I do finish all of my 70 books, I will be doing another review. Perhaps when I do, when I hit 50 Stephen King books, I'll do another one of these. But I feel like this is a good time to do it because 25 is a pretty cool number. Um, and so because of that, 
I, I just I just went ahead and did it. Uh, so thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoy my Stephen King content, go ahead and look at my channel. See if you like anything. If you like it, subscribe perhaps. Uh, if you like any fantasy books, look at my channel as well. It might be nice for you. If you like my edits, if you like my personality, anything like that, go ahead and click that subscribe button. If you like this video, please hit that like button down below. It really, really helps the channel. And if you have anything you want to say about my list, you can just go ahead and leave it in the comments down below. I will be looking at everything. I will be replying to everything. And I appreciate your comments. So thank you guys so much for watching. And I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.